There's hardly anything more iconic in video games than the mushroom in Super Mario Bros. But if you take a step back and think about it, why mushrooms? Seems kind of random. Why a red mushroom with white spots? and eyes staring into your soul. Okay, I can't explain that part. In a couple of developer interviews, Mr. Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of Mario, has spoken about the connection between mushrooms and fantasy lands. When you think about Wonderland, you think about mushrooms, right? There has always somehow been a relationship between mushrooms and magical realms. And he's right, not only are mushrooms associated with fantasy realms, but this mushroom in particular in a lot of cases. This iconic red and white mushroom references the real mushroom Amanita muscaria also known as the fly agaric, found in North America and Europe. Now, it is worth noting that the Mario mushroom didn't have this color scheme from the beginning. The original mushroom in Super Mario Bros. was actually orange with red spots. I think this one looks a little more similar to other types of Amanitas, like the Jackson's Amanita, for example, which have that orange and red gradient going on without the white spots. But both in the mushroom world and in the Mario world, the red with white spots is much more iconic, so let's talk about it. This mushroom looks a little creepier in real life than how it's depicted in cartoons, in my opinion. Like, the spots are actually these tiny, oddly shaped bumps all over the mushroom. They're often referred to as warts. But they're actually just the remnants of this white veil that's like a protective cover for the mushroom when it's very young. As it grows, the red color shows through and disperses the veil as leftover little bumps. So the spots are the mushroom's warts. The red part is called the cap. They're not always red just like in Mario, there's different color varieties, but they're never blue or green, so, you know, still neat though. But something cool about the mushroom cap is that as the mushroom gets older, not only does it get bigger, but the cap flattens out. So the younger mushroom looks more like the super mushrooms, but the older mushrooms look more like the mushroom-shaped platforms in Mario games. The base of the Mario mushroom could be interpreted as the fly agaric's stem or gills or ring, all of which are this sort of whitish color. Fly agarics are actually poisonous to humans, so it kind of makes sense that they made poor Mario sick in the movie but the toxins can supposedly be removed by boiling, so maybe that toad with the traveling kitchen set could have helped out? Just saying. But seriously though, don't eat these. Not worth being poisoned. Don't mess with wild mushrooms in general. There's a relative of this mushroom called the Destroying Angel. It's not red, to be fair, but it will actually kill you. And speaking of toad, why do toads look so similar to the mushrooms? I have no idea, honestly, but I can tell you that mushrooms are more closely related to animals and humans than to plants. Maybe in the mushroom kingdom that shared ancestry is a bit more apparent. Now let's talk about why these mushrooms are associated with fantasy stories and adventures and magic. Certainly their otherworldly appearance plays a role, but there's also the fact that fly agarics are hallucinogenic. There's evidence that many cultures throughout history used this mushroom as part of their religion and rituals and things like that. There's theories and legends that the mushrooms were used by Viking berserkers who used it to battle in a trance-like rage used to make soma, a ritual drink in ancient India, used by indigenous Siberian shamans, magical brews in Celtic legends. There's even some speculation, highly disputed speculation, that the fly agaric influenced certain Christmas traditions. For example, Santa Claus's red and white suit and flying reindeer, especially because reindeer are thought to get intoxicated from this mushroom. Not the mental image I expected when I did this research, but here we are. Christmas is ruined. However, as with a lot of folklore, related research, there's really no proof of a lot of these historical associations with the mushroom, but stories are powerful. Even the fact that there's stories about the mushroom's magical abilities is enough for us to relate fly agarics to magical realms. The mushrooms also pop up a lot in fairy tales and fairy lore, a lot of which comes from Europe, which is where the mushrooms are found. And they're found in forests, which are often thought of as a magical place in itself. I certainly think so. And sometimes they show up in a circle of mushrooms called a fairy ring, which definitely looks very mysterious and fantasy-like as well. One of the documented hallucinogenic effects of the fly agaric is size distortion of images. So the mushroom won't make you change in size, but it might make it feel that way. 
because the size of everything around you looks different. This effect was documented by a botanist in Victorian times, and some speculate that that's where the idea for Alice in Wonderland's growing and shrinking mushroom came from. Obviously, Alice in Wonderland had a massive cultural impact and definitely solidified that connection between mushrooms and fantasy and growing and shrinking. Mr. Miyamoto insists that he was not directly influenced by Alice in Wonderland, just that general cultural association. So that connection between the mushrooms and fantasy and magic is very clear throughout history, whether it comes from sort of the ancient hallucinogenic use or the, just the magic of forest life in general and legends relating to that. It's a powerful association and it was very interesting to look into. So that's the fly agaric, the real life Mario mushroom. Again, please don't touch these mushrooms in nature. They are poisonous. Be responsible out there and let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. Is this mushroom beautiful? Is it creepy? Please let me know. Um, I'm Kiki Beth. I talk about video games and their real world inspirations, among other things like game reviews and things like that. Subscribe if you're interested in that. I'd love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.